Ikigai is a Japanese concept that roughly translates to English as a motivating force, something that gives a person a sense of purpose or reason for living. Basically the thing that gets you out of bed every day. If you are unsure what your Ikigai is, then your Ikigai is finding it. My Ikigai is the nourishment of my own mind, body, and soul, and to that of the beings and things I interact with in my lifetime. Unfortunately, it took me far too long to realize the critical importance of self-nourishment. But I know now, when you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. So today, I will practice self-love in the best form I've ever found for myself, riding a bike. As a child of the late 80s, I grew up riding my bike around my neighborhood with all the other local hooligans playing games and finding trouble until the streetlights came on. My bike was not only my mode of transportation, but it was a catalyst to the life lessons a kid only learns out on the streets. Later in life, at 24, I found my love for two wheels again in the form of mountain biking after going through a particularly rough patch of life that had left me feeling incapable of and unworthy of love. These feelings manifested in my body as a tightness in my chest, a gripping sensation that persisted through everything and in my mind as a black hole that consumed all thought and emotion. I tried throwing everything I could think of into that black hole in hopes of ending its symptoms. Hobbies, work, people, drugs, alcohol, physical possessions, relationships, nothing filled that void, but I kept trying anyway. Luckily for me, I had become obsessed with trail riding at the time. Cycling became my reason to improve my nutrition, hydration, and sleep schedule to ride faster and longer, which in return, helped improve my mental health. I would do things and tell myself, for the bike, as if it was a sentient being that reciprocated the love I put in. I didn't realize at the time, but I was learning how to love myself through my love for cycling. It was a life lesson that ultimately took me 10 years to fully comprehend, because only recently at 34 do I appreciate its true value. Just like a lot of you, the past few years have been uniquely hard for me as well. The ending of 2021 wasn't a turning of the page or starting a new chapter kind of thing for me. It was more like lighting the book on fire and trying to put it out with gasoline. I was filled with regret for what was behind me and had terrible anxiety for what was in front of me. After a particularly bad panic attack that actually sent me to the ER because I thought it was some type of cardiac event, I realized I was in way over my head and truly needed help. So. I got a therapist and a psychiatrist and was uncomfortably honest with them in hopes of understanding what was what. I know life is hard for most people and I thought I was mentally fit and just coping normally like anyone would in my situation, but I was very, very, very wrong. The doctors had different descriptions for my life experiences, depression, generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, avoidant personality disorder, and drug addiction to top it all off. It was hard to hear because I didn't see myself in those symptoms at the time, but the eye cannot see itself, can it? I knew if I was going to climb these mental mountains, I would first need to be honest with myself that I was very much at the bottom of them. So I began to rebuild my life from the ground up using my Ikigai of nourishment as a starting point for every single aspect of my life. Just like forest fires are a very necessary part of nature to rid itself of old decaying life to make way for new growth, I intentionally let parts of myself die off. I took time to mourn my past self and then started to grow again. I would ask myself, was this thing, hobby, person, idea, place, work, nourishing to the future that I wanted for myself? If the answer was no, then it did not serve any purpose in my life, so I would not pursue it. Out of necessity, I became obsessed with nourishing my mind and body. I learned the importance of meditation and yoga, an effort of being present in the here and now. I spent as much time as I could with mental health professionals and support groups. I started eating healthy for the first time in my life and started the 12 steps to recovery while being very honest with friends and family of my struggles. I rode my bike and trained like my life depended on it because I know now it really does. 
If I was going to defeat my self-sabotaging protective self and heal my core wounds, it had to be from a place of self-love. Only on this new trail was I finally able to see my addiction was actually the fuel to the fire that was my depression. Seeing it for what it truly is helps keep me sober every day, but the price of admission for that perspective was everything I had to give, and it was honestly worth the cost. Because slowly but surely, I started to love and respect myself again. Although these mental mountains did seem impossible to climb when I started, I have a secret weapon that happens to be the perfect tool to get up and over any mountain, metaphorical or real, my bike. Riding this treacherous trail to self-love has been the steepest mountain I've ever had to climb, but for me, the view from the top is the only thing I've found that truly shrinks the black hole inside me. We all have our unique mountains to climb or struggles to overcome in life, and we all have our very unique ikigai we use to climb them. Discovering your purpose is the most significant thing you will ever do with your life, and the world will be better off because you went on that journey. It's unfortunate for some of us, rock bottom is the trailhead to the long, treacherous trail to self, but to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment one can have, so the pursuit of it is worth everything you have to give. <laughs>